Hi, I'm Bob Noonan, and we're going to talk about martin trapping. So, what I'm going to talk about is a method uh, that I use. There's a number of other methods. I'm going to show two of them, and then I'm going to have another guy, Jerry Braley, who's trapped a lot of martin. Uh, I'll have some footage of him making his own variation of a set. Uh, I use a 120 Conover, which is a 110 with two springs and I've experimented with different trigger positions for years. So the two things that these pans offer are very much more humane catches across the throat and chest and also uh, they're, more apt to in, they're more apt to enter the box. The bait is put in the back of the box, the trap springs are stretched to the side, the trap is slid in, the springs are cranked down and it's ready to go. It doesn't. And the way this set is made is you wire a piece of bait in through these two holes and then you have wire coming out of this hole and you wire it to a tree. Very simply like this. Facing straight down about a foot off the ground. And we'll make one of those sets back in the woods. When the I want to know, I want to have everything in as much of a system as possible so that I know I went in here, got to my knees, stood up, put the skunk up here I got everything I need to make the set in about two or three minutes. Make the set, walk right back out again. So speed is absolutely essential and resistance to weather is essential. This, this set right here will stay operating for the whole season. Well, There's a delightful sight right there. There's a Martin laying down over there, Mike. Yeah, yeah right by the box. Roll right over. Let's see if I can focus on him. There's the box, there's the Martin. Yeah, right there. Yeah, there's his tracks. There you go, you can see he went right to the height of that little knob. And, and off in that direction, and he's milled around on top of that knob. Jumping up on the high spots, trying to get a look at whatever it was he smelled. Uh, we're all staggering out of the woods here. <laughs> That's a half, uh, half a mile in and a half mile out. Half a mile. Yeah, it's a backbreaker. Rough territory. Yeah, we had what? Eight sets in there. The last? The last four. Seven. Okay, yeah. Connected with three Martin. Out three of Martin out of four, yeah. Right. Here's the set. You can see he's got cable right there tied to the trap. And there's the trap. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's got the jar in loops and they notch, they slip right in. This one's mounted right on a tree. And beautiful Martin, caught after the snow, I guess. A lot of Martin trappers use them. They cut notches in the sides, and 120s or 110s fit right in. You crank the springs down. The plastic is fairly stiff and it pushes back out on the springs. There's nothing wrong with not catching the females because when you kill a female that has been bred last spring, you're killing two to four more martin besides the one that is, is carrying them. So actually you could be losing uh, up to five martin another year if you kill that female. So uh, it's a good thing that, you know, uh, to see the seed that goes around and around and goes on their way. Well, that wraps it up on the sets and the uh, online footage. I gotta warn you about one thing. Martin trapping is really addictive. I've had two or three guys go with me and they coming back and everybody it seems like wants to come up and do some Martin trapping.